Hi, welcome back to another tutorial. This particular tutorial is not going to be about doing an effect. It's just going to be explaining some of the basic nodes in Fusion. Today, I'm going to start with the merge node. It's going to be something basic, something for you to understand so that you can follow along when I do tutorials. Let's get to it. Let's go to the Fusion tab. And let's bring down the famous merge node. The merge node has three inputs and one output. This is the foreground, this is the background, and this is the mask. The green is the foreground, the yellow is the background, blue is the mask. Look at the foreground like a building and look at the background as the ground on which you build. If I drag, um, let's get some images. Let's drag this image, this image, and this image down here. Let's connect this to the foreground. So it doesn't matter where you position the image, it will stay connected to the green node. So it is not how it looks that determines which one will be the foreground. It is the color of the link to the merge node. If it's green, then it's the foreground. Now this merge media in one is connected to merge one. Merge one feeds into media out one. Yet we are not seeing any output here. It is simple. Let's collapse this media pool panel. It's because this particular media in one, which is the foreground, which is the building, like I told you before, doesn't have a ground on which to sit, hence no output. If you provide any kind of background to it, it will display what is in media in one. So let's assume we drag even just a text node. We haven't inputted anything. We just connect this to the background. The media in one shows. If we type any text here, just type any gibberish stuff, it doesn't show why because this is sitting on this. So merge what basically it does, it places the foreground on the background. Let's disconnect this text node, delete this. Now let's connect media in two to the background. So the background determines the size of the merge. Now the size of this image is larger than the size of this particular image. So you'll see that this image when it sits on the background, the background is bigger and this image is smaller. A background node and connecting that to the background node here. So when you connect the background node to merge one, you are essentially setting this merge node to have your projects setting. You know your project setting, the one where you set here, 1920 by 1080 that setting this background takes that on automatically let's disconnect this background and we connect back this media in two so this beer is sitting on this image let's drag this to viewer one and let's rename it so we know what is what beer drag this to left viewer still let's rename this to cat sitting then let's right click on this, rename it to cat crouching. So the bear is sitting on this cat that is sitting. If you want to make sure that they are the same size, we can click on this, add a transform node and increase the size of the transform node so that it fills the screen. That is one way about it. I can delete this transform node. Now for a merge node, all the functions in the merge node affect only the foreground. It does not affect the background. But the background determines the size of the image that is coming out from the merge. If I decide to move this, you see that the image on the foreground moves. If I decide to increase the size, only the image on the foreground moves. Double click on this, double click on this, reset it. So it means I can increase the size of this to cover the whole thing so this sits properly on the cat. 
Now recall that when we started this tutorial, I showed you an image where I split the image into three slices. So the cat sitting is the first image you'll see there. So we connect this to be able to show what this merge is, we can, this background, we can connect it to the yellow input here. So as to make sure this background is transparent, we click on the background, click on color, and drag the alpha down to zero. Double click on this to reset it to the correct size. Then I go to the bear, the bear is the next one. I place it there. I connect this to the output of merge one to create another merge. This one now sits on this cat. Let's click on this two and connect this to merge two to create a merge three. To slice this image up into three, use a rectangle mask to do it. Drag that down here. Under the inspector panel, drag the height to one. That's the full height of the image. Then the full width of the image, we drag it to the full width. You know, we're going to divide it into three slices. So I divide this one by three. Then I move this mask to this edge here. So it basically it's going to be 0 0.167. Right click on this, copy, paste, so I want to drag this here so I can see it, then I click on this and I move this down like that until it gets to there. So this would be 0 0.5, then right click on this, copy, paste, we drag this to this viewer so I can see where it is in relation to this, then I can drag this forward till we get to the end here. So we get to 833 and we're good to go. Connect this to the mask input of the merge one. This mask only affects the foreground. So if I drag this to the viewer, you see it's only affected this cat. So now to make sure that this cat is positioned correctly, I click on merge one and I drag the center here. So it's positioned correctly there. I connect this also to the mask input of this. This will affect the bear. Let me drag this to viewer one, also known as the left viewer. Click on merge two, I adjust its position. And I connect this also, rectangle mask to merge three. Click on merge three and adjust the position of the cat. See how easy this is? It is so easy. And that is it. Change it to single viewer, drag this down. And that is it for the merge node. Just to give you the basics of how to work in the merge node. There are still a bunch of things you can do in the merge node, but I will go into this in subsequent tutorials. Take care. Bye.